The NFL officials have to literally earn stripes to work their way up. Tell us about the path that led you to your current role as the first NFL female official. I can tell you, Christine, when they hired me in the NFL, it wasn't an overnight sensation like a lot of people thought. So yes, earning your stripes is exactly what we have to do. And I think that's in any walk of life professionally. You want to start at the bottom and work your way up. And it's the same in the world of officiating. How I started this journey, I was a former athlete, basketball, softball player, and I hated the officials when I played. And truth be told, they probably hated me. I have an older brother, Lee, and this is all his fault. We can blame him. I asked him, I was on the phone with him, and I said, what are you doing tonight? And he said, I'm going to a football officials meeting. Can girls do that? I guess so, sis, be there at six. That's where this started. I showed up at that very first high school officiating meeting and being raised, once you start something, you don't quit. And then my competitive juices just started flowing and I thought, this is a way I can be involved in organized sports. Had no idea that there was a path that took you to college, the NFL, are you kidding me? I was just happy to be in Pascagoula, Mississippi working on a peewee field or, or the clock at a high school game. So 10 years into officiating high school, my crew chief, Larry Tucker, said, I want you to be my line judge on my junior college crew. So I'm about to send in my application, and he goes, hey, uh, don't send it in. The assignment secretary said he would never hire you because you're a woman. And I said, all right, well, if he doesn't want me on my merit, I'm not about to go and try to prove myself as a woman. This, this job is tough enough. Lo and behold, my 10th season, I told the crew that I was gonna give it up. And what I thought was my last game, there was an NFL scout there scouting officials. And I had no idea these people existed. And four days after that state championship game, I got a phone call from him. And he just said, I think you've got what it takes to go to the next level. And I didn't know what that next level was, but he surely had my attention with NFL behind his name. And he said it was this one play that happened in the championship game and it, he said it wasn't that you got the call right it was your field presence what separated you it was a very heated moment and he said how you handled yourself with the crew and with the coaches on the sideline he said that's what separated you he got me plugged in with Gerald Alston Gerald Alston I joke with to this day he hired me over the phone sight unseen and it was based off of a play that happened at a scrimmage that I was invited to go to I guess my audition uh -huh. for college. And he said when I answered the question truthfully, didn't make an excuse or lie, he said he knew my character was in check. And then I was hired in the developmental program in 2013 with the National Football League and then ultimately hired in 2015. So it was a very long journey, 18 seasons, I believe, high school and college, and then I'm into my seventh season in the NFL. You always hear you never know who's watching, so you need to be performing all the time. I tell my kids that all the time. It's not just maybe a scout there. I mean, it could be the president of the college. It could, it could be anybody is watching how you go about doing it, right or wrong, someone is always watching how you do it. What is your aspiration as far as trying to help other women, or how would you like to change that path, or you know, what kind of impact do you think you would like to have as far as making something different. Yeah, you give me chills just thinking about that because I didn't have the female to look to as a mentor or someone that had walked this path. And there, I hope one day that we'll be in a place where girls don't have to ask and girls do that, they will have someone that they can look up to. I don't know how many hundreds there are now in college, but being that said, I tell them the same reasons. You do this because you love it. You earn your stripes. You put in the, the gut work, but I tell them to do it for the right reasons because they love it, not for any recognition. And, but they don't have to be, um, they don't have to hold back either. They can call me, they can ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask the guys questions because I may have been in their path or there may have been another female in their path, but it, it's, it's just like anything too. You've gotta be able to trust someone in a line of work. And it may not be another female, it may be a male but I definitely want the women to know that my door is open for them. So in your journey as a trailblazer, what's been the best advice you've received? 
the best advice that I've, I have received is to go back to me. Be more assertive. Be the person I hired you to be. Don't doubt yourself. And when I was told that, I had kind of lost sight of being assertive because I was second guessing myself, my ability, like, oh my gosh, am I above, you know, is this above my head? But just go back and be yourself. And it takes all kinds of people to run an organization, but it doesn't mean we can't be kind to each other to make it a better place. Is there one particular level or one particular game, maybe a Super Bowl, <laughs> that really stands out to you, that you are, that you just, it just, it hit you. Yeah, I can tell you exactly where I was, on the pylon in San Diego, Pittsburgh, at San Diego Chargers, my rookie season. And it was my first Monday night football game. And the theme music from Monday night football was blaring in the stadium, that dun 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 dun. I mean, it was like in my chest. And I looked around and I went, I am not on my couch. And I just said, don't let me get hit and don't let me make a terrible call. And it came down to the last play of the game and I made the touchdown signal, you know, for the winning touchdown. And it hit the press the next day and social media and that the girl got it right. But it's crazy that that was the end result of that game and where it started when I thought, I'm here, I'm on this pylon. Yeah, taking in the confetti, my mentors told me, said, just take it in, Sarah, don't run off the field. And I did, I took it in. I, I did want to do a snow angel in the confetti, but I didn't, I reframed. But I was able to have all three of my kids there. They got down on the field for the first time. We were all together and able to take a picture in my uniform on the field. And it was a very special moment.